Morning. Good morning. Beautiful weather. Just the day for a stroll in the country, Mr. Um, ah, yes, you're one of our new patients, aren't you? Well, I'm Dr. Prentice. Did you notice where our nurse put our chart, did we? Hmm? Oh, oh, hi. No, well, she is a naughty little thing. Where can it be? Dr. Prentice. Dr. Prentice to reception, please. I can't come now. I'm with a patient. Oh, dear, they can't hear me, can they, on that silly thing? Dr. Prentice, this is an emergency. Please come to the main office. Dr. Prentice. Well, I must say it's a grand thing to be popular. <laughs> must pop out, Mr. Um, shan't be a moment. Who, who am I? Yeah. I'm, um... I... I am Dr. McTeague. Your dentist has been called away. Now, let's see. What have we got? Hmm. Very interesting. Yes, indeed. Challenging. This, as we say in the trade, will hardly hurt you at all. One in here... And here. No, that isn't too bad, is it? Well, yes. I know. Believe me. I know. It's a damn lie what they say about these injections not hurting. They do hurt. But you just relax. Let the drug take effect. Do you have trouble relaxing? Huh? You look a bit tense. There are exercises, you know. Exercises to help you relax. I do it myself. Let my mind drift. Images in the mist. Sometimes I see scenes from old movies, like huh? Breed of Sierra Madre. That's my favorite. I've seen that dozens of times. How the comes now? Feel anything there? No. Or there? No. How's that? Oh. Oh. And that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Fine. Very good. One reason I like it so much, and the greed of Sierra Madre, is because oh. <laughs> it's because it's it's about a dentist like me. Even his name is the same. Fatigue. In my dream, he's crossing the desert with a mule. On the mule's back, it has a huge golden tooth. His wife had won that in a lottery. And McTeague had murdered his wife. A solid gold tooth. Bigger than a treasure chest. No lawman will cross those burning sands. So they send a special posse after McTeague. A posse of three desperate men. Men who are on the run themselves. There's Humphrey Bogart. Orson Welles and, and Jack Nicholson. And the Welles character hates Nicholson. He doesn't trust him because he's just escaped from an institution for the dentally deranged. Oh, yeah. McTeague is ahead of them, though. Staggering doggedly on across the burning sands. His mouth parched, his tongue swollen, his... Hey, who the hell are you? Who are you? Sorry, yeah. I'm not boring you, am I? Uh -huh, boy, boy. Oh, good, good. It's, it's a boyhood habit I've never grown out of. Uh, telling a film. Or dreams of, of films. There. Ah, that's that done. Nothing to it. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. My Teague is near the top of the mountain. The Sierra Madre. There's a cave. McTeague drives the mule into the cave. He takes the huge golden tooth and hides it in a cavity among the rocks. That's what he wanted all along. Hmm. To give the gold back to the mountain. Oh, yeah. At last, he's happy. He comes out of the cave, down the slope, singing softly, stroking the donkey's ears. Suddenly, he's surrounded by Bogey and the gang. Nicholson grabs him from behind, and Wells hits him a mighty uppercut. 
tell us where the gold is, you wife-murdering varmint. Snarls Bogart. I seen him come out of that cave there. Babbles Nicholson all excited. You seen shit, lame brain. Snorts Wells, and he starts aiming kicks and punches at McTeague. But Nicholson just grins. He takes a sack from one of their mules and heads towards the cave. Pogey and Wells threaten McTeague with their guns, but he won't tell. Shoot me! He laughs. <laughs> All hysterical. Shoot me! And the secret of the Sierra Madre is lost forever. No, says Bogey. I won't shoot you. And he turns the gun on McTeague's mule and plugs it between the eyes. They drive McTeague to the dead animal and handcuff him to its legs. Bogey takes McTeague's canteen and empties all the water into the dust. Now, says Wells, you tell us where the gold is. We'll lie here till you rot. Suddenly, Nicholson comes running back, trailing fuse wire, setting the plunger. I found it. I know I have the secret of Sierra Madre. Here, press this and see. Wells gets really mad. He spins around to take a slap at Nicholson, but instead, his hand smacks into the plunger. The next thing, boom, boom, boom. They can smell smoke. Doggone it, says Bogey. Now look what you've done. That didn't hurt you, did it? Those injections really do work. Well, anyway, they run into the cave. The smoke is clearing away. Inside in the dust and rubble are gleaming pieces of gold. Hundreds of them. We found it, they yell. The lost gold mine of the Sierra Madre. <laughs> Laughing like children or madmen. They dance about, picking up the priceless nuggets. They pack them into their rucksacks until they're bursting at the seams. Bogey says, I reckon that... That's my room, there. Only a patient. Suddenly, they hear a noise outside. What was that? Mutters Bogey, stopping dead in his tracks. Has that devil McTeague escaped? No, says Wells. More like it's engines. What do we do? I seen a window at the back of the cave. Chortles Nicholson. We can make a clean getaway. Half with moron, snarls Wells. But they run to the far end of the cave. There really is a window. They open it and climb out. Did you ever see top copy? No. Or rear window? No. See? I don't want to know. No. Leave me alone. Well, well, here we are again. Who would have thought that would take so long? <laughs> now, where were we? Ah, yes, finding that blessed chart. Mm, now, it was the police, you know, searching for an escapee from the asylum. Schizophrenic kleptomaniac, they said. Sounds like an interesting case. Oh, let's forget about that wretched chart, shall we? Good God, mister. What a shocking state your teeth are in. Have you never been to a dentist? Really appalling. No, there's a place in dental history for anyone who can save this lot. Now, hold still... This is not going to hurt. Now, did you never realize how awful you'd look? Well, think of the damage you were doing to your general state of health. Oh, some people never learn. Why, only the other day I heard of a man, not a patient of mine, you understand, who had by all accounts a case of dental neglect almost equal to yours. But he would not be treated. He persisted in a childish belief that visits to a dentist were not only painful, but positively dangerous. Feel anything there? 